Have you ever found yourself transported back to the simpler times of rural America where family values and humor took center stage? The Real McCoys, a classic TV series that made its debut in the late 50s, did just that. Whether it was your first time watching this timeless show or you've revisited it over the years, the charm of the McCoys' down-to-earth existence and the delightful performances of its classic Hollywood actors resonate across generations. Amidst the cornfields and country landscapes, The Real McCoys unfolds the story of the McCoy family and their adventures in the fictional town of Smoky Corners. Picture yourself tuning into your television, eagerly anticipating the next episode, and chuckling at the witty humor delivered by Walter Brennan, a Hollywood icon who effortlessly brought Grandpa Amos McCoy to life. Reflecting on this beloved series, one can't help but wonder, who was your favorite classic Hollywood actor in The Real McCoys? Was it Brennan's portrayal of the wise and humorous grandpa, or perhaps another member of the talented cast who left a lasting impression? Before we delve into the details, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the real McCoys. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's set the stage for some fascinating insights into the show. Did you know that The Real McCoys was one of the earliest TV series to depict rural life in a light-hearted yet genuine manner? Its success paved the way for a new genre of family sitcoms that captured the hearts of viewers across the nation. As we explore the nuances of this iconic series, keep in mind the warmth and laughter it brought into living rooms across America. And now, we invite you to share your own connections to the real McCoysier anecdotes and fond recollections that make this show a timeless treasure. The Real McCoys, a TV series from the late 50s, featured a notable cast with Richard Crenna appearing in all 224 episodes. The show's family dynamics raised eyebrows. Although Amos McCoy was meant to be the grandfather of Luke McCoy, Walter Brennan, who played Amos, was only 32 years older than Richard Crenna, who portrayed Luke. This discrepancy might seem odd, but it reflected a reality in Appalachia, where early marriages were common. However, there were reports from writer Everett Greenbaum alleging that Walter Brennan made racist and anti-Semitic remarks on set. These claims shed light on a different aspect of the show's behind-the-scenes dynamics. The Real McCoys wasn't just about the on-screen family, it had its share of interesting off-screen dynamics too. The Real McCoys, a series that unfolded in the late 50s, holds an intriguing backstory beyond its on-screen family dynamics. One notable aspect lies in the geographical setting. While the show portrayed a farm in the San Fernando Valley, it was actually filmed in Culver City, a distance away. Surprisingly, the valley was once a landscape of farms and orchards before transforming into the suburban expanse known today. However, behind the scenes, conflicts brewed. Producer Sheldon Leonard's departure from the series was notably attributed to his disdain for Walter Brennan, citing Brennan's racist tendencies. Leonard's deliberate distance from the show handed the reins to Irving Pincus, a move that hinted at a deliberate shift due to Pincus' Jewish background contrasting with Brennan's anti-Semitic stance. Additionally, the casting choices added an interesting age dynamic, with Richard Crenna portraying a character significantly older than his on-screen siblings, a fact often overlooked in the portrayal of familial relationships on the show. The Real McCoys, despite its on-screen portrayal of family life, had its share of off-screen complexities that added layers to its narrative. The theme song of the 1957 TV series, The Real McCoys, encapsulates the essence of this West Virginia family's relocation to California. The show's lyrics highlight Grandpappy Amos leading the clan alongside the joys and squabbles typical of any family. The portrayal of rural life, though endearing, faced challenges in closed captioning, failing to capture the true essence of the character's country dialect. The unique speech patterns like turning shore into shore or altering names like Elvira to Elvery often lost their rustic charm and closed captions, hindering the full comedic impact. However, amidst the show's success, unforeseen incidents like Kathleen Nolan's horseback injury during filming temporarily disrupted the series. Despite these nuances and challenges, the real McCoys stood as a depiction of familial warmth and the joys of everyday life resonating with audiences of its time. The farm of the McCoy family, featured in the series, was said to be 20 miles northwest of the Los Angeles City Hall. This location held significance as it was close to where Walter Brennan, known for his role as Grandpappy Amos, was buried at the Mission San Fernando Cemetery. 
The essence of this series, according to at least one TV historian, was its simplicity. There were no very special episodes or messages. Watching it was as relaxing as sitting in a rocking chair on a farm. An interesting tidbit about a character in the series involves Hassie McCoy. Her real name is actually Tallahassee. In an episode titled The Rich Boy, Grandpa explained that when a cousin sent a postcard from Tallahassee, Florida, they liked the name, and hence, when she was born, she was named Tallahassee McCoy. The real McCoys found its charm in its unassuming nature, offering a tranquil viewing experience akin to the calm of a farm. The series didn't need grand messages, its simplicity resonated with audiences. The Real McCoys, a series from the late 50s, underwent changes when it shifted to CBS for its final season. Characters like Luke's wife, Kate, disappeared and little Luke vanished off to boarding school. This transformation reflected shifts in character dynamics. Little Luke and Luke both shared the same first name, an intriguing mystery never explained. Another fascinating aspect lies in comparing Hassie and her friends from the late 50s and early 60s to the later depiction of Valley Girls in 80s media. The series provides a unique lens into the evolving portrayal of California's Valley culture over time despite the show's setting and era. These shifts and character disappearances underscore the show's evolution over its run. Richard Crenna, a familiar face from our Miss Brooks, surprised viewers when he debuted in the 1957 series. Known for his high school student role with a squeaky voice, his natural, rich, smoke-burnished voice in The Real McCoys was a stark contrast. Interestingly, Crenna, portraying Luke alongside Walter Brennan's Amos, had an age gap of only 32 years despite their on-screen grandfather-grandson relationship. This unique dynamic added depth to the show's familial portrayal, catching the audience off guard with Krina's transformed voice and the intriguing age relationship between the main characters. The series, sponsored by Ralston Purina, found its footing through these unexpected elements, setting the stage for an engaging and distinctive family narrative. As we wrap up this journey through the quaint and heartwarming world of a certain vintage television series, I invite you to take a moment to ponder your connection to those rustic, endearing tales that painted life in simpler hues. The Real McCoys, with its charm and timeless appeal, might have etched indelible imprints on your memories. Perhaps it was Grandpa Amos' wisdom that resonated or the family's unwavering bonds that struck a chord. Now is your chance to share those cherished thoughts, your personal vignettes tied to this beloved show. Whether it's a specific episode that lingered in your mind or the nostalgia of a bygone era, your reflections add richness to the tapestry of its legacy. Let your voice join this symphony of reminiscences. Your anecdotes, musings, or even the smallest snippet of a memory are the threads that weave a collective ode to the real McCoy's enduring spirit. Your words could spark a smile, evoke a shared sentiment, or kindle anew the love for this vintage gem. Thank you for pausing here, for contemplating, and perhaps for sharing a piece of your heart. Your presence in this nostalgic rendezvous is truly valued. 